I deserve it. I'm worth it. I'm good enough. I can have it all with bells on. So this bread is exactly the same as your brain. Who put that disgusting margarine on their bread? Anybody? But keep, pretend you didn't. You make your beliefs. Your beliefs make you. The robot mind's going, okay, let me prove that's true. I want love. I, I insist on love. I want success. I insist on success. You'll have a great life, an amazing life, an incredible life. So how do you mastermind your life in three easy, fast, rapid steps. Well, you do it like this. This is called the ladder of looping thoughts. And this is how it works. You think a thought, you feel a feeling, you have an action, you justify it with a thought. People say feelings come first. No, no, thoughts always come first. So imagine if you woke up and you thought a thought, I am not enough. Shout that out in German. What is I'm not enough in German? Okay. I'm not enough. I'm not smart. Life is hard. If you thought any of those thoughts at all, I'm not enough. Life is hard. I'm not smart. I'm not good enough. Not educated enough. Not attractive enough. Not worthy enough. How do you think you would feel if you thought that thought? Sad, defeated, frustrated, pissed off, unhappy. Any good feelings you might feel if you began by thinking these thoughts? Any good feeling at all? No, there's no thoughts come first. It's a ladder. First is a thought, then is a feeling. So the feelings are all negative. Sad, defeated, unhappy. And by the way, belief is nothing more than a thought you think a lot. That's what a belief is. A thought that you think a lot becomes a fixed belief. So if you think a negative thought and you feel all negative feelings, what kind of actions would you take? What kind of actions would you take if you thought, I'm not good enough, I feel sad, frustrated, lonely, annoyed, unmotivated? What kind of actions might you take? Exactly. No action. I don't take a risk. I don't do anything. I sit at home eating potato chips and watching Netflix. Often the action is no action. Or it might be I'm super defensive or I cry a lot. And then here comes the classic. It's called confirmation bias. I think a thought. I feel it. I act in a negative way. And then I justify it because, well, of course, because I'm not enough. Of course, I never got that job, never got that girl, never got that pr promotion because I'm not enough. But imagine if you just take out the knot. I am smart. Life is amazing. So if you change that, we take out that, take out that. Shout out I'm enough in German, please, as loud as you can. So if you start your day saying I'm enough or I'm smart, life is amazing, what kind of feelings might you feel? Positive, happy, motivated, confident, self-assured, ready to take a risk, all good feelings. And then you think a good thought, you feel a good feeling. What kind of actions or behaviors might you take if you think I'm enough and you feel positive, motivated, powerful, confident, at ease, good about yourself? What kind of actions might you take? You try something, you take a risk, the only risk in life is not to take the risk. So you would take risks, you'd ask someone out, you'd ask for a promotion, you'd start your own business and you'd justify it because you're smart, you're enough. So it's a looping thought. And thought, what everyone else tells you, thought comes first, apart from two things, the fear of falling backwards and the fear of loud noises. Apart from that, thoughts always come in front of feelings. And your mind doesn't care, by the way, if your thoughts are good or bad, healthy or unhealthy, your mind is a robot and its job is to make your thoughts real. Every minute of every day, your genius mind is working to make your thoughts real. It doesn't care if they're good thoughts or bad thoughts, it lets them in. Let me show you something. How many of you had toast for breakfast today? Anyone eat bread? Okay. So here's some lovely German bread. What do you put on your bread? 
Shout out what you put on your bread today. Cheese, olive oil. Uh, who put that disgusting margarine on their bread? Anybody? Put, keep, pretend you didn't. Okay, so this bread is exactly the same as your brain. Whatever you present to your brain, what do you think happens? It goes in. So I'm going to put yummy olive oil on this bread. Wonderful. A little bit of butter. And it's going to go in. But if I decided to put deodorant on my bread, a bit of deodorant, some yummy eye drops, some of my husband's shaving cream, what's going to happen to the bread? Can the bread say, I don't want eye drops. I'm going to resist the shaving cream. I don't like margarine. Whatever you put on the toast, what will happen? It goes in. And it affects you. So if you put delicious oil on your toast, it goes in. It's good. If you put eye drops on your toast, it goes in and it makes you sick. But your brain is exactly like the toast. Your brain cannot reject whatever you present or whatever you put on your brain, it goes in. So when you say, I'm no good, everything falls apart, everything I touch falls apart, I'm no good with people, I don't like confrontation, it goes in. And your mind, the robot that you have is working to make that real. When you say, oh, marriage is so hard. Really? I thought being single was hard. I was sick. I had to get my own medication. When I got married, my husband would do it for me. He met me off the plane. He takes me to the airport. Having kids is so hard. Really? What if you spend all your money on IVF and it doesn't work? And actually having children is the best thing in the world because your DNA goes on and on. But if you think a thought, life is difficult, life is hard, everyone's out to get you, I don't know where to find the money, then your mind is going to make that real. Your mind's job is to make everything you think real, good or bad, healthy or unhealthy, useful or useless. And if your mind's job is to make your thoughts real, what is your job? Anyone know what your job is? It's to think better thoughts all the time because your mind will work constantly to make them. So let me show you. So put your hand out in front of your mouth, close your eyes, and just imagine you're holding in your hand half of a big, fat, juicy lemon, the most gorgeous, succulent lemon you've ever seen. Take a deep breath and breathe in that gorgeous, succulent, luscious lemon smell. Breathe it in. Nothing smells quite like a lemon. Breathe it in some more. And now squeeze that lemon so hard that lemon drops come to the surface. Stick out your tongue, literally stick out your tongue and lick off those drops of lemon. Now open your mouth as wide as you can and shove that entire lemon into your mouth and eat it. Eat the lemon, chew the lemon, Bite into the segments of that lemon juice burst onto your tongue. Swirl that lemon all around your mouth until your taste buds pucker and swell up. Keep eating that lemon, sucking that lemon, chew that lemon. Swirl all the juice around your mouth until your mind says, oh, this is very acidic. I better pump out tons of saliva to a thought. Open your eyes. This is not a trick question. You cannot get it wrong. Put your hand up if there was no lemon. Raise your hand if there was no lemon. You're not wrong. Raise your hand if there was a lemon. You're also not wrong. And raise your hand if you never raise your hand, whatever the question is. So you were both right. There wasn't a lemon, but also there was a lemon. Where was the lemon? In your mind, your mind doesn't care. It doesn't care what you tell it its job is to make your thoughts real. And your job, should you choose to accept it, is to think different thoughts, to remember. To remember every time you get up, whatever you put on your toast, your metaphorical brain, it will go in and it will impact you. And once you know that, you have a duty to think different thoughts, to stop doing that I'm not enough, to say, I'm smart, life is amazing, I'm gifted, I'm talented. Because... We all have limiting beliefs. A lot of us have limiting money beliefs. People say things like, I can't find the money. 
Well, who says, I've got to pay my gas bill. I'm going to go for a walk. I'm going to find the money. I'm going to come home. I'm going to pay my bill. That doesn't even make sense. But you see, if you hear from your parents, I want never gets. Who heard that when they were growing up? I want never gets. But who also heard squeaky wheel gets the oil? Anyone hear that? Might be a very English expression. But it means if you ask for attention, you get it. So we have two beliefs. I want never gets. Squeaky wheel gets the oil. Which one is true? Which one is true? The one you choose to believe is the one that is true. Squeaky wheel gets the oil. I feel able to ask for attention, to ask for a pay rise, to ask for money, to ask for love. I know I'm worth it because I keep saying it. And now I take all the actions because I know I'm worth it. But if I go, I'm not worth it, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy, I'm not enough, is the biggest disease that affects our minds. So let's go through this again. If you want to have anything in your life, you can have anything you want with bells on anything, anything. Doesn't matter where you went to college, doesn't matter what you look like, doesn't matter what your body is like, it matters that you believe you're worth it. So I'm going to do three things with you that will help you to mastermind your life. Whatever you want in life, you've got to do three things. People think, oh, I've watched The Secret. Surely I can sit in my house and go, om, om, and money will fall from the sky. This amazing person will turn up and date me. No, they won't, because you've also got to take action. But the first step to action is knowing you're worth it. 80% of your success comes down to having and I'm worth it mindset. And we're all born with it. Anyone met a baby that says, don't look at me. I've got triple thighs, no hair, no teeth. Babies think they're worth it. So let's do it now. Let's do it rather than hear about it. Close your eyes. And I want you to keep saying as loud as you can, I am worth it and I deserve it. You can say it in German or Estonian or French or Italian, but say it and say it with conviction. On the count of three, let's go. One, two, three. I'm worth it. I deserve it. I'm worthy. I'm deserving. Now think of something you want. It could be wealth. Nothing wrong with wanting wealth, especially if you do good things with it. Could be health. Could be joy. Could be love. Could be phenomenal, multiple orgasms. It doesn't matter what you want. It matters that you start by saying, I'm worth it. I deserve to think of what you want. And you're going to add it. I am worthy of multiple orgasms. I'm worthy of multiple wealth. I'm worthy of success. I'm worthy of love. So let's go. I want to hear conviction in your voice on the count of one, two, three. I am worthy of, complete that sentence, I'm deserving of. Keep going. And if it, you say, well, it feels a bit weird. Well, that's a good sign to do it more until it doesn't feel weird, until it feels normal. Because your mind likes what is familiar. If rejection is familiar, putting yourself down is familiar, guess what you go back to? But you can make anything that's unfamiliar. Who here wears lenses or ever wore lenses? See, putting a bit of silicone on your finger and shoving it in your eye is the most unfamiliar thing you can ever do. And your eye goes, WTF, what is that stuff? And it tries to get rid of it. But if you do it every day, and even we're just squeezing that silicone off your eyes, it becomes familiar. So you've got to make this familiar. Your mind loves what is and wants to go towards what is familiar while going away from what isn't. Let's do it again. I want to hear the conviction in your voice. I am worthy of... Complete that sentence. I am deserving of. Complete that sentence. I deserve. Complete the sentence. I'm worth everything I desire. And now here's the thing that no one ever does. Imagine you've got a screen in front of you. Take a look at the thing that you require. I want you to imagine you've got x-ray glasses and you can look at what you require. I don't like the word want. I like the word require. Insist on. I, say, I want love. I, I insist on love. I want success. I insist on success. So close your eyes if it helps. And imagine you are looking 
at the thing that you require, the thing that you desire. Because you see, whatever you want, whatever you require is going to require something from you. You require to write a best-selling book. Well, if you can't learn to be a speaker, you can't write a best-selling book. You can, but it will never sell. You know, Eminem, Eminem wanted to be a rapper so bad. He said, Eminem, come on. You're a blonde guy with blue eyes. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. But he kept looking at what he wanted. All the doors were shut. He said, who cares? I'll punch them open. And he would too. So when they shut the doors, no, 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 no. Only handsome, aggressive black guys or rappers. He said, I was so angry. I used the anger and I knew what I had to do. I had to keep turning up at events and rapping, being laughed off the stage, booed off the stage. But I saw what I had to do. So see what you have to do. Because when you see what you have to do, then you see step three, which is go out and do it. But you can't do step three unless you do step one. I'm worth it. Eminem said, I am worth being the best rapper in the world. I'm worth it. I deserve it. I've got this talent. I was given this talent to use. And so he looked, took a good look over, around, through what he required so much. And then he went out and did it. And he was performing, I think it was Jay-Z, but it may not have been. He was performing. He didn't win. But someone, it may have been Jay-Z, in the audience saw him and saw something amazing. And then he became, well, one of he became, and his whole movie, 808 Mile, is all about the anger, the frustration. He was locked in lockers. His mother put him on Valium. Kids peed on him. But he knew what he wanted. He knew he was worth it. And then... He did it. And by the way, Ed Sheeran, when Ed Sheeran said, they said, Ed, take a look in the mirror. You have white skin, red hair, big glasses. You are not a rock star. You know who told him he was? Eminem said, listen, get angry. Believe you're worth it. See what you have to do and then do it. And Ed Sheeran slept in bus shelters. He slept in parks. He busked every day because he understood. If I want to make it, people have got to hear me. I've got to put myself out there. I might be rejected, but I'm like a big rubber ball and I'm going to bounce back. So we've got to do what Ed did, what Eminem did. The first step, 80% of your success comes out of this mindset. I'm worth it. I'm worth it. I deserve it. And then put on your x-ray glasses, look over, look around, look right through what you really, really desire and require, and then go and do the work. But you can never do step three if you haven't done step one. Let's do it all now. So close your eyes. Thank you. Close your eyes. Imagine you're doing the M&M hack Look at what you want and believe you're worth it. Of course you deserve love. How could you not deserve love? Of course you deserve phenomenal success. Of course you deserve wealth and joy and health. Take a look at it and say, I deserve it. Let me hear you. I deserve it. I'm worth it. I'm good enough. I can have it all with bells on. With bells on because I'm worth it. I deserve it. And now... Take a look at the thing you require so much. Take a look at the thing you require. And look at what you have to do. Anything that you require, require you to do something. You want love? Get off the couch. Put yourself in front of the kind of person you want. You want money? Do some work on how to get that. What can you create? You have a skill. How can you monetize that? Who would have thought eyebrows would have made Anastasia millions and millions of dollars? But they did. And then finally, go and do the work. The best plan in the world won't work if you don't do the work. But you can do the work when you know you're worth it. So for me, I wanted to write a book. But when I put my glasses on, I thought, oh, no, I don't want to write a book. I want to write a best-selling book that changes people's lives. So I knew then. I saw it. Well, I better understand what does a best-selling book look like. How much time have I got to write this book? What have I got? I knew I had to go on stage. I had to face rejection. I had to ring up magazines. Do you want to write about my book? And I did it. And I've now written seven best-selling books. But it started not with a talent, but with a belief. I have a message. And I'm worth writing that message down and selling it to everybody. 
But if I had the belief, oh, what if nobody likes it? What if it gets a terrible review? What if people hate it? I wouldn't have gone forward. So I think I'm out of time, but let's do this one more time. Think of the thing you require. Love, health, joy, earth-shattering orgasms, a fantastic metabolic rate, a powerful immune system, being the hottest person on the planet, having your own business. It doesn't matter what it is. It matters that you tell yourself that you're worth it. The most important words you will ever hear in your whole life come from you. You see, if someone says to me, oh, you're amazing, they might have an agenda, but if I say it, my mind says it must be true. So let's do this one more time. Think of a belief and a thought. I can have what I require. I have it in me to make it happen. Think of the feelings you feel. Think of the ways it makes you behave and then justify it. Your thoughts are yours to change. And here's just a few things. Remember, you make your thoughts and then your thoughts turn around and make you and then you have confirmation bias. You make your beliefs. Your beliefs make you and then you look every day for proof that what you believe is true. And guess what? You will find it everywhere you go because this robot-like brain works even in your sleep to make your thoughts real, to make your beliefs real. That's his job. And if you're not doing your job saying, I'm amazing, I'm great, I'm lovable, I'm smart, then you're allowing yourself to not change. So every time you have your toast in the morning, remember, if you put olive oil on your toast, avocado on your toast, smoked salmon on your toast, it will go in. The, your, the toast can't reject what you put on it, and neither can your mind. Your mind can no more reject your beliefs and the toast can reject eye drops or deodorant or shaving cream or anything else I choose to put on it. Your mind doesn't know and it doesn't care if what you tell it is true or false, right or wrong. It lets it in, just like toast. Everyone stand up as quick as you can. Point your left arm towards me. Make sure you've got a bit of space here. And all you're going to do is one thing. You're going to swing your arm as far back as it will go. Make, come forward. Don't poke someone else in the eye. That's all you're going to do. So let's start now. Put, put your arm out in front of you exactly like that. So if you have to go over someone's head, it's okay. Swing your arm as far back as you can. Notice where it's gone to. Mark your arm. Take a look at how far you got it. Bring it back. Now you're going to talk to your arm and do whatever you say. Say to your arm, you're super flexible. You're like a rubber doll. You're like Barbie or Ken. And you're going to go a third further. You're like a pretzel. Just imagine all these muscles and ligaments loosening up like spaghetti. Say to your arm, go a third further. And watch what it happens. Swing it back and watch as it goes a whole third further because you told it to. And now let's do the other one, the other arm. Swing it as far back as it will go. Take a look at where it's gone to. Bring it back. Say to your arm, go a third further. You're super flexible. You're like Barbie or Ken. You're going a third further, because I'm telling you to. Now swing it back and watch what happens. Thank you. Wait, 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 wait. So when people say, wait, wait, one more minute. People say, I can't get it up. I can't have an orgasm. What are you doing? The robot mind's going, okay, let me prove that's true. So you've got to be very careful about saying better things. Whatever you tell your mind, it will do. And by the way, when you think of something sad, your eyes fill up with tears. When you think of something embarrassing, you go bright red. Who does that? Who notices they go red when they think of it? Who gets tears when they think of something sad? Whose tummy rumbles when they think of food? And this is for the guys, and you better raise your hand. Who knows when they think of something sexual, their body responds immediately. And if you don't put your hand up, I feel so sorry for your partner. You think of something sexual, and your body gives you an erection. Isn't that true? Of course it's true. 
And here's the biggest thing, the placebo. What you think of a drug has more of an effect on you than what's in the drug. Because your mind makes your thoughts real. Every minute of every day is its job. And your job, think great thoughts all the time. You know what will happen? You'll have a great life, an amazing life, an incredible life. Take responsibility for your thoughts. That word means, responsibility means an ability to respond. Think great thoughts, have a great life. Thank you so much. I'm here all day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Check out my next video here.